As you already know, this image represents the overview or the bird's eye view of the color managed workflow. Well, we're going to continue our journey throughout this map. We talked about the monitor, we talked about the ambient light, we talked about the hardware calibrator and the whole process of it. We talked about how when we calibrate our monitor, we create a profile of our monitor which describes the characteristics of our monitor and puts it in a very reproducible state and we also now need to talk about the ICC profiles of the documents and the output devices and working profiles or should I say spaces so this video now from now on will be essentially color theory so that you get yourself familiar with the terminology and all the profiles and, and what it all means and how do they fit together so when we go into more practical stuff later you can kinda connect what's what, where, when and how okay so let's talk about the color models first the color models well basically they describe they're more like a mathematical abstract way to describe the color theory so in a way uh, here we see I'm sure you heard of it, you know about it, right? It's the RGB color model. It's what we refer to as the additive color model. Why? Because it uses the three primary colors, red, green, and blue, to describe pretty much to create or describe pretty much all the other colors. So let me take my color picker, and I'm sure you remember this. Well, here we have three sliders for red, green, and blue, and we have the red, green, and blue values going from 0 to 255. Okay? Now, let me show you what that means. So, for example, if I put all of them to zero, I get black. If I move them all the way to the right, what I get is all the way to 255, I get white. That will be here, right? If I only want red, I would only move this slider for red to 255. If I want yellow, that will be this one, right? That's red and green, as we can see here, red and green. If I want some in between color, I will just move them around until I find some color. So, using this principle, we can get all the other colors. Problem is that this is just a theory, this is just a, a model, a mathematical way to represent color. It doesn't really tell us how much red is red, right? We live in a real world, so we need to find a way to to kind of define the appearance of that red in real world. Well, before we go into that, let's talk about color models and let's continue to talk about color models first because the color models are the way to describe color and then after that we'll talk about the color spaces and the color spaces basically talk about the more physical way in which we describe the red not just any red but whatever the limitation of the certain device is but I'm getting ahead of myself so let's keep, stick with the color models the abstract mathematical way of thinking right when, well we also have so the one on the on the right uh, on the left was the additive color model the one on the right that's the CMYK cyan magenta and yellow and key stands for black well, uh, that's subtractive color space. And if you can see, right, we have here yellow, which we have magenta and we have cyan. Well, magenta and yellow gives us red. And here we have red and green gives us yellow. So you can see it's pretty much the same combination, just in a different order. Well, K is additional one, and this is mainly because we use RGB color model usually in our RGB devices such as cameras, scanners, monitors, you know, smartphones, tablets, whatever, TVs and the CNYK model is something we use to describe color in printers and we, we can print using the cyan, magenta and yellow ink but we also using those three we can achieve through rich blacks so we need another key component and that's black. Key stands for black or key color. Well, uh, so we have the additive color model on the left, we have the 
uh, subtractive color model on the right and we also have the one we're going to mention later is LAB or lab which basically describes human vision shaped like a sphere and it has three axes one going from the uh, from the top to bottom that's going from white to black and then we have the two other axes A and B A represents anything going from magenta to green and the uh, B axis represents everything going from yellow to blue. Okay, well these are just models, right? They don't really tell us about, they just tell us how to get the color but they don't tell us how much of the the red can we actually get using a certain device or application. So let's see how that works. Well, what you see here, that's called spectrum locus. I've probably seen that already. And what it does, it represents the human vision plotted in 2D. So this triangle here, well, that will be the reproducible colors on my monitor. And that monitor uses an RGB color model. But its color space, the range of reproducible colors, is represented by this triangle. Now what colors it can reproduce that's what is known as the gamut. But if we compare that to say a prepress environment, a four color printing process uh, which uses a, a standard of US web coded swap 2, well as you can see it will have a different shape and it would not be able to reproduce all the colors that the monitor can display. So the difference between that we usually refer to that as out of gamut colors. Now the term out of gamut can also mean that if we go beyond uh, what even my monitor can display which is wide gamut monitor. Well this comes into play when you're trying to go from your monitor to your print you get very saturated blues on your monitor for example and then you try to print and because of the physical limitations of that device we can reproduce the same saturated blues. Now one is using the RGB color model that will be the monitor and printer is using the CMYK color model and we just saw that in, in, in mathematical terms we can using those two models we can represent all the colors right but here we see that's not the case because there are physical limitations of the devices that just doesn't allow us even though they use that model they have a certain limitation well this doesn't just come into play when you're comparing a uh, monitor to printer it can also be seen if you compare different monitors and different printers they will all have different capabilities in terms of reproducing colors. So for example if you see this blue square in the middle that's let's say that's a one pixel that's blue pixel right magnified and it will have RGB numbers 42, 82 um, and 171 well that's all great but in terms of colors of, of that blue being reproduced by different devices there will be the same numbers but the devices themselves will have limitation and therefore the appearance of image will change. And because we have devices that have different limitations, well, we have moved on from the theory now into real world. So we're not dealing with the model anymore, with the mathematical idea, we're now dealing with actual color spaces, right? What's the space uh, of, what's the color range or the space in which the color can be reproduced and because we have different devices they all reproduce color differently we call that device dependent spaces so the RGB from now on or the CMYK will refer to them as when you hear them referred to as the color space that means that well there's a limitation of the device right so they're using a color RGB or CMYK color model but we call them color spaces because they can only reproduce certain colors in a certain area, a certain space. So 
the RGB model translated in a more practical way in which our devices such as scanners, cameras and, and monitors reproduce color, well they're not doing it mathematically per se, they're doing it physically. So the way they do it is to shine essentially three lights. You can think of it as shining three lights and basically it's for a monitor it's backlit, right? So uh, the pixel will be in bright or, cer or in certain color. So each pixel has red, green, and blue, in which he, in which uh, different intensities it can shine. So if you turn off your monitor, you get black. If you shine all three, you get white, and then the combination of them, you get all all the other colors. But you can't get really all the colors as we just saw. You can only get as red as that device can reproduce. That's why it's device dependent, and typically we refer to those an, as input devices. Because uh, you know, if you if you scan your image or using RGB model, you know you, you do it in a color space, RGB color space. If you take image with your camera, it's done in a RGB color space. If you create an image and you generate, you know, some computer graphic or something on your screen, it's done on your monitor. Or if you view an image on your monitor, it's still RGB color space, right? So it's dependent on that particular device. And it's input because it, we usually that's where we generate our digital data, and then we have a device the device dependent output device such as a printer, right? And using a CMYK model here, we refer to as as the CMYK color space because it's dependent of that device. And the way it's done is basically we we use printer to put cyan, magenta, yellow and black inks on a paper in a four color printing process. In other we have other inks but these are the four color uh, for four color printing process. So we use those inks and we put them on paper and then the properties of the ink, the properties of the paper, how much is it, does it absorb and how much does it reflect and of course the ambient light. All those factors will determine how how saturated the greens will be, how saturated the the yellows will be, and so on and so forth. White we get by using a white paper. Black is what we get when we combine all three colors plus black to get those really rich blacks, right? Well, we also have to take into account uh, the device independent color space, and that's a lab. And it's device independent because it's not designed to present to to, to uh, present the color based on a certain device. It's designed to represent the color based on human vision, and it doesn't change. It's it's always the same. And this is very important for color management process because we tend to use that as a reference point, something that does not change, right? So what we do is we start with the source space. RGB and then we go to profile connection space in Photoshop that's lab there are other uh, different profile connection spaces but in, in uh, Photoshop that's lab and then it moves into destination space in this case that's CMYK but we can also go from one RGB to the other RGB but basically in order to for Photoshop and color management system to know what range of colors can an RGB device really reproduce? What range of colors a printer can reproduce? Well, this is just the way we get the colors using those RGB and CMYK models, but how do we know what really is the limitation of the device? Well, we know that by using profiles. We call them ICC profiles, which are basically just a piece of data that describes what is the characteristic of that particular device? What's the limitation? So when you, you know, when you go to Photoshop and you convert from one space to the other, Photoshop in the background, in behind the scenes, it goes into lab. It has to have the profile to begin with, the source space. It needs to know the destination space. It has to have those information written down inside of a image profile and then it does the conversion for you trying to maintain the appearance of the image as close as possible to the original and that's pretty much what the color management system does
right? It uses those profiles which describe the characteristics of each device. It uses a reference point which is LAB or lab, and then it go and then it does the whole conversion for you. And this is all happening behind the scenes. You don't really see it, but that's pretty much what's going on. Now let's talk about the actual profiles, which are just a piece of data that describes the characteristics of a particular either a device, either an application, or an image itself. So if you remember this, right, we talked about this, uh, which is a comparison of the devices, printer and monitor, and what's the range of colors it can reproduce. Well, we have different profiles, so let's talk, start with this. We have profiles for the devices and they basically describe the gamut or the range of reproducible colors for that particular device and because of that well we call them device dependent color spaces one of one of them would be for example the profile of your monitor or the profile of the particular printer they can be generic or they can be custom uh, generic ones those are the ones let's say you buy a monitor and you get some kind of a pre-made factory made profile that you install with the CD right or if you're using a profile um, for your printer that also comes you know just ships along with your uh, printer I can also make custom ones in terms of monitor we saw how we can use a hardware de device to calibrate our monitor and create a particular custom profile for a monitor and we we can do the same thing for printer we you know, using a software, we print some color patches. We use the device similar to the one we use for um, measuring color on our screen. We use the one that basically just emits its own light and then measures the reflection and gives, gives feedback back to the uh, application. And we use that to measure what's the, the 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 range of colors and to basically profile our monitor to to put all the characteristics of the monitor inside of a, a piece of data that can be then re read by a color management system. Well, there's also ICC profiles of images and they basically describe what's the range of colors within the image and they're typically device independent. What does that mean? Well, they're not really designed based on any particular device even though they can be a close match. They're designed particularly to be good for managing the color within the image when you know editing your images. So they're particularly good for editing your images and they're always standard, you know, they're just always there. They, they don't change like the, the different profiles for devices change and there are many, 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 many different devices. Well, there are many different profiles but all of them are the same. You know, if you choose one profile, it's going to be the same on another device as well. So the typical list of profiles we're going to go through are sRGB, color match, RGB, Adobe RGB 98, uh, ECI RGB, and Profoto. We'll talk about that in detail a bit later. So why is this important? Well, if you consider this to be, let's say, Adobe RGB range of colors, right? Well, let's take talk about the primary colors, the red, green, and blue, which here describe the overall uh, color range of this particular profile. Well, if you compare that with sRGB, which is obviously smaller, here's the problem. The green in Adobe RGB and the green in sRGB, they both have the same value, 0 for red, 255 for green, and 0 for blue but check out how they really differ, right? One is more saturated than the other. So it's not enough that you try to, you know, use a color picker on your on your image and you, dis and you find what the numbers are there. You also have to have the profile of the image so that you know how it's described. It could be a profile of the actual image, uh, which we see here it could be the profile of the device either way you need to have that profile so that you know what the number really means what does 0 to 55 0 really means well you can only know that if you have a profile from within your 
measuring the numbers. And we also have uh, so-called working spaces, and this is, I believe, a term uh, decided to, to use by Adobe. And you can pretty much find this in all of their um, applications. And basically what it does, it describes what is the default profile behavior for that application. So it can be sRGB, color match, Adobe RGB for, for, for working with images right was the default behavior and it can also be we also there can specify uh, the output so not just the input spaces but also in working spaces that's why they call them working spaces in which we manage the color within the image but also the output spaces such as printer output space and some other stuff as well well that's the next video now we're gonna discuss the working spaces right the sRGB the color match Adobe, RGB, ECI, and Profoto. We'll discuss them in detail and then we're going to compare that with different output spaces and how we manage all those policies and, and how does that, uh, ma how, how manually to set up Photoshop to work the way you want it to work and how color management really works in more practical sense. So this video was more about explaining the difference between these profiles and spaces and models and all that stuff and now we're going to talk about more practical terms and see how they relate to one another.